A billboard in the airport suddenly slipped. The glass shattered and hit the skinny boy. His life was in danger. At that moment, a man came out of the crowd and said he was a doctor. The boy's jugular vein had been cut by the glass and was bleeding profusely. The boy's mother was very anxious. The doctor used clean clothes to press the boy's neck to stop the bleeding. Then a kindly young man said, You're killing him. Sean said that the doctor had pressed the wrong spot. Sean then stepped forward and moved the doctor's hand up a little. The boy regained his breath instantly. Sean then pressed his hand on the boy's chest. He lifted his shirt and found only a piece of glass in his body and said he couldn't die. The doctor felt humiliated and asked him to give his name. Hello, I'm Dr. Sean Murphy. I'm a surgical resident at San Jose St. Bonaventure Hospital. Yes, as he said, Sean is a talented doctor with autism. He created a 3D image of the, his brain and recreated every organ in his body. He accurately discovered that the veins in the boy's left arm are popping. Then he sensed that the boy's left lung was damaged, causing a traumatic pneumothorax. If he was not resuscitated immediately, his life would be in danger. Then he asked the crowd for a knife. But knives are a prohibited item at airports. Sean asked them to give the boy artificial respiration. He got up and left to the surprise of everyone and came to security for a knife. Since he was autistic, he couldn't clearly articulate the sudden emergency. The security guard of course ignored his request. Sean looked anxiously at the knife. Then he just grabbed the knife and ran away when the security guard wasn't looking. But he didn't get very far before the security guard came and jumped him to the ground. Luckily, the boy's mother appeared in time and helped Sean explain the situation. With the cooperation of the security guards, Sean managed to gather all the tools he needed. The man unscrewed the bottle of alcohol and poured the strong whiskey on the boy's chest. He then put on gloves to sterilize them. He cut the plastic tube with a knife and placed it in the bottle. And then he wraps it with tape. A simple one-way valve device is ready. Then he used a knife to cut a small hole in the chest. Then he inserted the plastic tube into the chest. The wine then bubbles up. The air that had collected in the boy's lungs was removed. Soon he was breathing again. His parents breathed a huge sigh of relief. People around them applauded Sean. The boy's parents hugged him with excitement. Sean and the boy were then taken to the ambulance together. Sean had an interview at the hospital today. He kept an eye on the EKG in the ambulance. Then he suddenly noticed that the boy's heart rate had changed. But the nurse said it was not a big problem. There was nothing to be nervous about. The boy was then taken to the hospital. Sean told Drive, Brown, who came to take over the patient, to make sure to check the chalk cardiogram. But she took a look at the diagnosis and said the boy's heart didn't seem to be in trouble. She told Sean to get some rest. Sean tried to force his way into the operating room. Security guards stopped him and kicked him out. At that moment in the operating room, Drive, Melendez, the attending surgeon, is impressed by the ingeniously simple one way valve device. Drive, Brown asked if the boy needed an cardiogram. Neil said that it was not necessary in this case. Outside, Sean is still battling with security. He's trying to find a way in, but no matter which way he goes, the guards would appear in front of him and block him. Halfway through the surgery, the attending surgeon was keenly aware of a slight fluctuation in the boy's heart rate. He asked Drive Brown why he had just thought of doing an ultrasound. Drive Brown told him about the one-way valve and Sean. At this point, the boy's blood pressure suddenly dropped. He then quickly found Sean under Drive Brown's guidance. He asked him why he wanted to do the echo test. The sudden questioning caused Sean to shut himself down. He was unable to express himself properly. With Drive, Brown's patient guidance, Sean finally expressed his thoughts accurately. Because he saw the change in the amplitude of the EKG, he thought the boy had a pericardial effusion. That's why the other organs weren't working properly. But Neil got a call saying that the child cardiogram results weren't normal. Neil thought they were wasting their time and left in a hurry. But Sean was convinced that something was wrong. Drive. Brown saw that he seemed to have medical knowledge, so she took Sean into the operating room. Sean looks at the boy's chalk cardiogram and asks for a constant replay. He took one look at the chalk cardiogram and immediately identified the cause. There's a concave deformity in the right atrium. The attending surgeon didn't think this would happen, but drive. Brown thought it was possible because the boy was struck by glass and cut his carotid artery. The glass fragments could have traveled with the blood to the heart and caused a pericardial effusion. Neil thought it was unlikely, but he arranged for an assistant to perform the surgery anyway. A short time later, he did find a glass fragment from the heart. At this point, they all looked at Sean in unison. Sean was relieved to see that the boy had been saved. Meanwhile, the hospital board was having a heated discussion. The board did not approve of Sean's appointment because he has autism, but the director is adamant about retaining this talent. 
He knows Sean's expertise in surgical medicine. Drive. Andrews was adamantly opposed because he was afraid of medical errors. At that moment, the video of Sean saving the boy's life was posted online and received a lot of praise. The dean also vouched for Sean with his position. Finally, they decided to let Sean express his opinion first. So Sean slowly came forward. The woman asked him why he wanted to become a surgeon in front of so many professionals. He had a hard time organizing his words. But then he saw the group of shareholders questioning him. Sean boldly began to tell his childhood story in earnest. It turns out Sean had an unfortunate childhood due to his parents' reasons. He left home with his brother Steve when he was young. They lived together in an abandoned carriage. One day Sean and Steve followed a group of friends to an abandoned warehouse. They planned to play hide and seek here. Sean followed Steve to climb on the abandoned train. Steve accidentally slipped and fell off the train. Steve lost his life instantly. This incident made Sean understand that life is so fragile and should not be lost so easily. Should have become adults. He wanted to help others to live and realize the meaning of life. Sean touched everyone with his own personal experience. He perfectly illustrated his intention to become a doctor. Even the most skeptical drive, Andrews also no longer have objections. At this point, the woman stood up and walked up and welcomed Sean to the hospital. I want to be the first to welcome you to San Jose St. Bonaventure Hospital. People applauded the young man. The dean assigned him to Neil's surgical unit. Sean's career as a doctor begins in earnest. Drive. Sean sits upright in front of the bed waiting for the girl to fart. The girl had just come out of surgery. Sean wanted to make sure she didn't have any post-operative bowel obstruction. Sean had to wait for her to fart before he could release her from the hospital. The girl said she had already farted. Sean also went over and smelled it and said he didn't smell it. The girl was very angry and speechless. This is Sean's first day on the job. There was a female patient in the hospital. The court showed that she had a tumor in her stomach. The other doctors did not say anything when they saw this. Sean looked at the court and after some thought said, She has a sarcoma, a malignant tumor. Drive. Brown rushed to reassure her that it was just a preliminary guess, but Sean said it's definitely malignant. The doctor interrupted Sean and asked him to leave the group chat. Sean then stopped talking. The attending doctor told them to get ready to schedule the surgery. Drive. Melendez threw some chores to Sean. He wanted Sean to get more in touch with the patients and learn the ways of the world. In addition to the farting girl, a man about to be discharged from the hospital also had the misfortune to meet Sean. His ear just got water in it. The patient rushed to ask him what was wrong with him. Sean smiled and said, I'll tell you when I know for sure. I don't want to scare you. The patient was terrified. Drive. Andrews then approached Drive, Melendez, and confronted him about why the department had done an MRI on a recovering patient. The film showed all normal results. Drive. Melendez unknowingly thought of Sean. Sean was examining the girl at the same time. The girl was only having stomach pains, but she was pressed twice by Drive. Sean. Her illness became a secret they could not be told in front of her family. Drive. Melendez blamed Sean for giving the patient a test. He asked Sean if he heard the girl's parents arguing all the time. The girl was just pretending to be sick because she didn't want to go to school. He then asked the nurse next to him to be Sean's leader for the day so that she could monitor Sean not to treat patients indiscriminately. Sean was removing the stitches of an old man. Sean noticed that the skin of his wound was discolored. He said that the old man might have an infection. But the nurse said he was 82 years old. Everything is discolored. Sean then reluctantly let go of the patient's hand. Then he took the patient's vomit bag and looked at it again. He didn't think the color was normal. He just offered to take it to the lab. The nurse shook her head. Sean said he wanted to send him home. Sean didn't want to lie in the face of the patient's questions. According to all hospital rules and direct instructions, you can go home now. After Sean left, the man did not leave but went directly to the director. He said that drive. Sean was not responsible for his condition. Sean said that because the hospital wouldn't let him do the tests, he had no way to give the patient an accurate answer. Luckily, the director looked at the man's case and said there was nothing wrong with him. The man was relieved. After he left, the director cautioned Sean. Sometimes patients just need to be reassured. That's when Sean thought of the little girl he had allowed to be discharged. He took a sample of the girl's body to the laboratory for a series of tests, and he did find something wrong in the test results. Sean knocked on the door of a house in the middle of the night, although he has autism, but he still had the courage to tell the man that his daughter might have intestinal torsion, since the lab results were not clear, so he wanted to come and check the girl's condition for himself. However, the man thought it was alarming and told Sean to come back in the morning. He then closed the door. Sean knocked again, 
The man opened the door in a huff. His wife came over at that moment. Sean said that if he didn't let himself see the girl today, he would not leave. The two men saw how determined he was, so they led him to their daughter's room. It turned out that their daughter was unconscious. The bed was full of vomit. Sean hurriedly picked up the girl and took her to the hospital. On the way, the girl's condition was getting worse and worse. Sean immediately performed CPR on the girl. When they arrived at the hospital, Sean reported the girl's condition while doing CPR and instructed the nurse to prepare the surgery drugs immediately. Sean did an ultrasound on the girl. He visualized the girl's organ structure in his mind. He found a knot in her small intestine. Part of her small intestine was necrotic. She needed to be operated on immediately. But drive, Melendez, the attending physician, was in the operating room at the moment. The nurse said that Sean needed drive. Melinda's permission to perform the surgery. But Sean said you can't control me. He called the dispatch center directly and told them to arrange an operating room immediately. He wanted to operate himself. Sean entered the operating room. He had been waiting for this moment for a long time. He was just about to open the surgery. But then drive. Melinda's arrived. He took the scalpel from Sean's hand. He had always had a prejudice against Sean. He wanted to send Sean home to sleep. But the chief showed up just in time. He first drive Melendez to let Sean stay in the operating room as his assistant. The girl survived the surgery in time. Sean walks into the room. The girl's parents hugged Sean tightly and thanked him. But another patient was in big trouble because the body only needs one kidney to live. Sean offered to remove the patient's healthy left kidney. This would expose the location of the malignant tumor. Although the surgery was risky, but if the kidney is not removed, the woman will die. He's better than some doctors who cut off a patient's normal organs for profit. The woman had a huge tumor in her stomach. Because her son's wedding is in a few days, she was terrified of being operated on now. Drive, Brown had to assure the woman that she would be allowed to go to her son's wedding. The woman was feeling much better, but the pressure was on the doctor's side. Drive, Kalu thought she should not make promises to her patients, but tell her the truth. But Brown said it would be worse for the patient if she was scared. Soon the surgery began. As they cut open the woman's abdomen to begin cutting into the tumor, they realized the tumor was extraordinarily large. It was also blocking the aorta. There was no way to continue the operation. Drive, Melendez had to interrupt the operation. He first took a sample to test the tumor type. That's when a nurse approached Sean and told him that Drive, Melendez needed help with his surgery. Sean rushed to the operating room to change his clothes. He was just about to sterilize his hands. Drive, Melendez stopped him. He called Sean in just to rush the results of the lab chart. Sean saw that the surgery was in trouble, so he went to drive, Brown and drive, Kalu. They found the lab report on the computer. Both of them sighed repeatedly when they saw the type of tumor. Because of the location of the tumor, it was impossible to operate. Then Sean had a picture of the patient's tumor in his mind. He came up with a way that the surgery could be done. It was just very, very difficult. They would need to cut out a healthy kidney of the woman, the three of them were discussing in the office whether to abandon the operation or not. At that moment, Drive, Kalu spoke Sean's mind. Drive, Melinda's weighed the risks and pros and cons, and decided this was the best way to go. But he didn't know it was Sean's idea. Drive, Melinda's then decided to perform the surgery. Drive, Kalu was the surgeon. After the woman's left kidney was removed, the view of the tumor became much clearer. Drive, Kalu easily removed the tumor. The surgery was completed successfully. Kalu wanted to take Brown to celebrate, but Brown was very disapproving of Kalu's approach. She thought he was taking credit for Sean's work, but Kalu says he didn't do anything wrong because he took the risk for Sean. At this time, Sean also heard from Drive. Melendez that the surgery was completed, but he didn't tell Drive. Melendez how it happened. He thinks it doesn't matter who gets the credit. The woman wakes up and is very grateful to Brown. She did what she promised to the woman. That's the end of this episode. We'll see you next time.